CTWD. Let's do it. What does CTWD even mean? It stands for Contact Tip to Work Distance. Also known as electrical stick out or just stick out. It can be very important depending on the scenario. Certain mixes of gases, certain processes require the stick out to be just within a really, really tight sweet spot. Other processes can be very forgiving. So let's first talk about short circuit MIG. And then we'll show some dual shield flux core and some spray as well and even some spool gun. Right here I'm just using the recommended settings for quarter inch thick steel fillet weld 2F T-joint. Most of the time I prefer to have my contact tip flush or slightly protruding past the nozzle so that I can keep a short stick out most of the time for short circuit MIG. The reason is if you use too long a stick out the stick out itself gets electrically heated from resistance and it melts off at a different rate. It doesn't have the punch. It doesn't matter where you push or pull. I know there's going to be tons of people argue that point but I test them all the time and both work provided you use the right settings and a short stick out when you start getting out of position like vertical uphill and overhead stick out becomes even more important this is the little vertical t-joint and a little hint here is I just basically use the machine settings except I dropped down a couple of thicknesses and it was pretty dang close notice I'm, I'm holding a fairly short stick out probably a half inch or less and that, again, that's the reason for having my contact tip up flush with the nozzle. If you have it recessed, you won't have a short stick out. You can use a little longer stick out on thin wall stuff because you're not really so worried about penetration. You just, uh, you know, it's going to penetrate in 063 or 116, 16 gauge. Penetration is not an issue. You just want a good looking weld. So a slightly longer stick out is just fine there. But I wouldn't get carried away either way. Same settings would work just fine on overhead. You just probably have to pay a little bit more attention to your stick out. So here I'll use a nice tight stick out. Just punch right on up in there because I don't want it drooping and sagging. And fairly fast travel speed on this thin wall tubing works pretty good. Probably the main thing is I drop down to 025 wire for this thin wall tubing. That helps a lot. Let's take a look at dual shield flux core now. Your stick out is going to be slightly longer in most cases than it is for short circuit MIG. And that just helps it get a, a good efficient burn off. I'm going to show you a resource at the very end of this video, a book that lists stick outs and settings for all kinds of wire feed processes. It's kind of an old book. They think it's dated. I don't think so. But there's an old saying that if you want to get a new idea, read an old book. All right, here is a root pass in a 3G plate with a backer, quarter inch back and strip. You can pause if you want to see the, all the details. Main details are 24 volts, 330 inches a minute using 045 wire. Not a whole lot of gun angle at first, and gun angle is one of those things that, for me anyway, it's always more than you think it is. The stick out is probably a good eighth of an inch longer than for short circuit MIG, and that needs it. It needs it to burn off efficiently. Here you can see we're getting a little bit more gun angle. Pretty normal, but it still works. For flat and horizontal, the stick out on dual shield can be pretty forgiving on certain joints. Here we're using a pretty darn short stick out. It's still working. You can see some BBs, some, some spatter here and there, but it's laying in there and it's going to be a nice looking weld and the slag's going to chip off super easy with no prep. Usually things weld better with prep but you know let's get real in the real world if you're in business for yourself and you got a light coating of mill scale and you're using dual shield it works. Up next is spray transfer. I was working with one of our welder skills instructors Matt Hayden on a video using 80-20 gas for spray transfer. That's 80% argon, and the books will tell you that you need a minimum of 80% argon to get into spray. Maybe some argument on that, but you really you need enough argon. 75-25 gas won't get you into spray efficiently. I'm not saying it won't. You can't. You can't do it. It's just that it works a lot smoother and a lot better, and the sweet spot's a lot smoother if you have higher amounts of argon. 
A more common gas for spray is 95.5, 95 argon, 5% CO2. More forgiving, I think, in achieving spray transfer. You can achieve it at lower amperages. All right, here's spool gun. Spool gun actually, usually, I'm not going to say always, you rarely say always in welding, usually you want to try to spray. And you want that hiss. You don't want the bacon frying sound like you do with short circuit MIG on steel. You want a nice hiss. Nice smooth transfer of metal. You know, for thicker aluminum, you usually use a, a larger diameter wire, preheat maybe, and much higher currents. But either way, you want to shoot for a spray transfer, and you're going to use a much longer stick out than you would for short circuit MIG. Here it's probably over three quarters of an inch. So the stick out for all these different processes and different material types is different, slightly different. And some of them are very forgiving. But there is a really good book I told you about a little bit earlier. And it is this one right here. The Procedure Handbook of Arc Welding from James F. Lincoln Foundation. I don't have a thing to do with Lincoln. They don't even know I'm doing this. But when I find a really good resource and it's as affordable as this, this one's $30 on the bookstore. International shipping is crazy high. So FYI on that. But this book lists all kinds of parameters for all kinds of processes with the CTWD listed too. Hey, and one more thing. I support these videos with my online store at weldmonger.com. So I'd appreciate it if you'd go over there and check things out.